Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Advanced Bass Fishing. Really happy you guys could make some time to join us today. It's always much appreciated. And guys, I'm really excited about doing today's video because if there's if there's one thing in bass fishing that I have worked harder than anything at for over the past 50 years, it's fishing jerk baits in the winter time like we are going to talk about today. This is a this is something that I've spent decades perfecting. I've had a chance uh, to grow up here and fish in the Ozarks where jerkbait fishing was was a really, you know, it started back in the 70s, the modern day jerkbait fishing as we know today. And um, I fished a ton in the winter with jerkbaits and I still do most of my on the water lessons uh, in the winter time with jerkbaits. So I think by the end of this video, um, you guys are gonna have some good information that's gonna help you guys out anywhere you're at in the country with it. So anyway, what we're going to do in today's video, we're going to concentrate on fishing a jerkbait in the colder weather months of specifically November, December, January, and February, maybe a little bit into March, but cold water jerkbait fishing, which we're getting ready to get into around the rest of the country. And, and there is an art form to this. There's a lot that goes into fishing jerkbaits in cold water. It's probably the most difficult technique to master if there's one bass fishing technique that I think is harder to learn and master over any other one, it's wintertime jerkbait fishing because there's a lot of subtleties to it. There's a lot of uh, variables or a lot of things to consider. And it's something that um, it, it takes a lot of practice. <laughs> Hopefully with the years of experience that I have on it, I'm really going to cut your learning curve down on that. So we're going to get into that today's video. But what we're going to do guys, we're going to start out, I'm going to um, talk about the jerk baits, the specific jerk baits that I like to use in the winter time, um, different profiles, sizes, lip designs, and that type of stuff, and, and really talk about the situations that they excel in. We're gonna go over colors. Um, we're gonna go over, later in the video, we're gonna talk about equipment, and probably one of the most important parts of it is the cadence and retrieve that you use on a jerk bait. And then finally, we're gonna wrap it up with the areas to throw it in, and the, uh, you know, the specific structures in your lake that wintertime jerkbait fish get on. Um, so before we get started, guys, just a couple quick housekeeping tips. Appreciate you guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking part of here if you have, if you're inclined to do so. Uh, one of the best ways you can help support advanced angling here, the advanced bass fishing here, is you guys may have heard I'm, I'm partnered with Tackle Warehouse now. I'm not with Baitworks anymore. And I'm gonna, all the links here of the jerk baits I'll have in the description. And if you guys use the links that I put in the description, they're my own Tackle Warehouse link. Uh, the channel gets a small percentage of that commission at the sales. And so I'll put all of the equipment uh, that we're using today in today's seminar in the description of this video. And if you're uh, interested in purchasing some of those baits or, or anything through Tackle Warehouse, um, it's a good way to support the channel if you could use those links. And a couple other things as far as uh, what you can get back here in the channel for this uh, hour long seminar we're getting ready to do. Um, please check out our Fish the Moment Lake Map Breakdowns and our virtual lessons and my uh, Solar Bat uh, Signature Series Sunglass List. All those links will be in the description and it's a good way to, uh, to help the channel out here and to make sure these videos keep going forward in the future. So much appreciated with that. Okay guys, a little cool in the, in the tackle room this morning here. It's like 20 some degrees out. For some reason, I've got a little heater up on the wall and it's not working. So it's a little bit chilly in here right now, so we'll get into it. Okay guys, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you my stable of wintertime jerkbaits, which are different than jerkbait fish in the rest of the year. There's, each one of them has a specific situation they work in. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I've got, um, Two, four, six, seven. I've got seven jerk baits here, and I'm going to go over each one of them here, and I'm going to explain to you why I like them and why they're good in the winter time, and sort of like the the situations they work in the best. Because one of the things that you're going to find out about winter time jerk bait fishing is they are very, very size sensitive. As far as there's not a other time, another time of year where the the profile and the size of a jerk bait makes more difference than in the winter time. And also guys, I will say one thing is, um, uh, we're talking about mega bass jerk baits today. This is the mega bass vision 110. It's actually a silent, but um, I helped design this bait for mega bass in the late 1990s. So I'm very familiar with the product line here. So we'll get into that. Okay, guys, right off the bat, let's, 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 I'm gonna start out with the uh, mega bass vision 
uh, 110 plus 1 and the 110 plus 2. Now, the lip differences on this, if you can, if I can show you here, this is a, this is the traditional Mega Bass uh, Jerkbait Mega Bass Vision 110 right here. And this bait right here will get down, uh, you know, probably about six to seven feet if you use it on six to eight pound line. And then this is the Mega Bass 110 plus one. You can see it's got a little bit bigger lip on it. Let's see if I can hold it here and get a better, better view of it. So the Vision 110 is gonna run probably six to seven feet on light line. The 110 plus one is probably gonna knock that, you know, nine to 10 foot zone on six to eight pound line. And the 110 plus two, the deeper lip, this thing will get down pushing 13 to 15 feet on the same pound test. So those are the three different lip sizes that we're gonna talk about here. But right now I wanna talk about the two deeper lip, full size Mega Bass uh, Vision 110 bodies with the deeper lips on it. Now this is probably what, when people think about winter jerkbait fish, and this is what most people use right here, is this particular profile. Actually guys, when it comes to wintertime fishing, I probably use these the least. I'm gonna get into the more finesse jerk baits that I prefer in the wintertime, but there are situations where the standard size jerk bait works with the deeper lip on it. First thing is um, it's gonna be a little bit better in the winter time when those water temperatures are a little bit warmer and a little bit, the fish are a little bit more aggressive. So the time that I'm using the deeper lip full size jerk baits, most of the time that water temperature is going to be uh, probably anywhere between say 45 to 55 degrees in the winter time on, the, on what I consider the upper end of the water temperature zone. And you're gonna find out that these little bit larger, not that this is a big jerk bait, but it's, it's larger in comparison to what we're gonna talk to, this little bit larger four and a half inch jerk bait works better at the beginning of winter, like in November or something, and also at the tail end during the early pre-spawn. Um, so there's a window of like November, early December, and then again, February, March, where I prefer these two things. Now, the times that I use the deeper lips here uh, versus the regular lip, it has to do with a couple different things. Number one is the water clarity. Um, the times that I'm using the deeper lips, obviously, is I wanna get the bait down a little bit deeper. So um, I'm using these most of the time in a little bit cleaner water, simply because I need to get the bait down a little bit deeper. So if I feel that the fish are gonna be in that, oh, sort of that, um, you know, eight to 15 foot zone, a lot of the times I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using this. And also I use these deeper lips ones, deeper lip sizes is if I'm fishing steep banks. So say for example, if I'm cast into a fairly sharp drop off bank and I want the bait to get down real quick, I'll go to the, the deeper lip, like the one, the 110 plus two, because it dives more vertical and it gets down deeper quicker. Whereas if I would use the regular traditional lip, it's gonna have more of a horizontal presentation and I can't get that depth out of it. So steep banks and a little bit deeper water. So scenarios that I would use this in, again, would be steeper bluffy type banks, uh, points, main lake and secondary points. Uh, in the middle of ditches, over the tops of submergent timber, places that I really am trying to pull fish up out of deeper water. Now, a lot of sometimes what I'll do with these is I'll get like way out off the end of deep points, like in 25, 30, 35 foot of water, and I'm targeting those suspended fish that may be out there on those points. So, for example, if the water visibility is five or six foot deep, I might get out there in 25 or 30 foot of water, fan cast around and try to target some of these fish with the deeper jerk baits. Um, also, another thing you'll find out about the little bit larger four and a half inch size, it works a little bit better if you have some type of a windy condition. So I like some type of a southerly airflow, you know, 10, 15 mile an hour wind, which is uncomfortable sometimes in the winter time out there if it's windy, but it seems like that combination of a south wind, a little bit windy conditions, um, generates more strike on the strikes on these larger sizes with that. So that's uh, the conditions for the, the full size ones there. Now, if you, if you gave me, if you, if you told me like, do I use the one, the 110 plus two, which is the really deep one versus the 110 plus one, probably use the 110 plus one a little bit more simply because it gets down into that 10 foot range a little bit better, which I prefer. And another thing you're going to find out guys about, um, deeper lip jerk baits like this, a, a lot of different companies make deep lip jerk baits, is the action is different on it. Because when you have 
a, tr a traditional lip jerk bait, like on the 110. It has more of a side to side darting action, depending upon how hard you jerk it. And when you go to a deeper lip, it has more of a, uh, of a down, it's, a, it's more like a crankbait. It doesn't jerk hard side to side quite so much. It tends to want to dig down. So therefore, when I'm fishing the deeper lip ones, I'm not jerking that bait real hard. I'm more, I'm more finessing it, trying to keep it in one spot a little bit longer. Okay, that's the bigger ones here. Now, the, the other bigger one I use is the 110 plus one in the silent model. This is, this is not the traditional Mega Bass Vision 110. This is the Mega Bass 110 silent model. And the difference in the silent model is the balancers on a Vision 110 go back and forth and create some noise. The balancers in the silent model are a fixed solid in there so they don't make any noise. And guys, it's a big, uh, one of the big advantages that you're gonna have in the winter time is going to the silent model sometimes because a lot of times if the water is really clear and the wind's not blowing much and it's cold, a lot of those fish, they they don't want a lot of noise. They, they it's like they, they're a little bit more inactive. They're a little bit more, less aggressive. And I catch a lot more fish on the silent model on those days where I don't have much wind or, uh, you know, some type of, uh, you know, bright sunlight condition. Also guys, one, of the, one another time that I will use the four and a half inch models is if um, the water visibility is a little bit marginal for wintertime fishing. Now, clear water is gonna get is a little bit better, but you don't have to have super clear water to catch fish in the winter time on jerk baits. If you've got water visibility of say three foot is the th th two and a half to three feet, about like this or so is about minimum what I like when the water's really cold. Now, if the water temperature is like closer to 50 degrees, you can catch them in like two foot of visibility, but you'll find out that the little bit larger profile jerk baits are gonna work a little bit better um, if that water visibility is down in sort of that two to three foot range. Um, they can just see it better, it throws out a little bit more water displacement and vibration. But um, this is the one that most people use and I'm gonna, probably gonna pull you away from that by the end of this video after I get done explaining it here. Um, another thing that, we'll, that I'm gonna talk about here in a little bit, uh, you know, line size, we're gonna talk a lot about line size in this video because line size is so critical in the winter time as far as getting the maximum length on your cast and the maximum depth and the best action on it. So we're gonna talk in, in uh, line test terms here in a little bit, but one, I think before we get into that, one of the common mistakes that I'm gonna to try to break everybody here, most people use way too heavy line for jerkbait fishing in the winter time. Um, I use four, six, and occasionally eight pound tests, but I use mainly six pound tests in the winter time. So if you're one of those anglers that use over eight pound test line in the winter time, you're greatly reducing the amount of strikes that you get. So we're gonna get into that later. Okay, now the next, let's talk a little bit about, you know, going to the smaller sizes. The next size we're, we'll talk about is the, uh, this is the Mega Bass 110 plus one junior. Now this is the smaller version. This is the same, basic profile as the 110 plus one. Here's the difference in it. It's basically the same, you know, larger lip profile. Um, actually, that's the 110 plus two there. Larger lip profile, it's got the, you know, deeper lip. It's got the same lip, but it's got a smaller body. So here again, this bait, when the 110 plus one junior is a little bit more of a finessey presentation. So when do you want a little bit more finessey presentation? And, the, and there's other ones we're gonna talk about here, but specifically the 110 plus one junior. This is gonna work better if you have lakes that have some type of a mixed species. You know, if you've got a lake that's got a combination of spotted bass, smallmouth, and largemouth bass, the smaller jerk baits are gonna work a little bit better, which we'll talk about uh, here in a second. If I've got lakes that are predominantly largemouth, I'm using the larger jerk bait. But those mixed species lakes, um, those smaller jerk bait, like the 110 plus one junior works really good. Another thing with this is the smaller bait is gonna be really good on those tougher conditions. Now, ideally in the winter time, you're gonna want, uh, you're gonna want warmer conditions. You're gonna want like those unseasonably warm days to get the fish more aggressive most of the time. But if you don't, you're not gonna have that all the time. So those typical cold winter days where it's tougher, the smaller jerk baits, smaller profiles, simply gonna get you a little bit more bites. 
Now, the other three that I'm going to talk about here, the, the ones that I just talked about there are probably the ones that I use. I use them quite a bit, but I use them. I don't use them as much as the next three that I'm going to talk about here. The next three that I'm going to talk about here are the ones that, um, that these are the ones that are my favorites, the ones I use most, most all year. And that is the X80, the Megabass X80, and the X Nanahan plus one and plus two. This is rapidly becoming my favorite. These are a lot smaller jerk baits. Let me show you in comparison here. This is the X Nanahan plus one next to the Megabass Vision 110 plus one. So you can see a, a considerable size difference in the two baits with that. And guys, these three jerk baits right here are the ones I really want to focus on in this video here, the X80 and the X Nanahan series. These are finesse jerk baits. And here's one thing that you got to think about or consider a little bit, or what I have figured out in wintertime fishing is the profile and the size of the jerk bait is a direct relationship to the water temperature in the lake that you fish. So what you have, I don't care if you're fishing here in the Ozarks where I live, or if you're fishing in Texas, or if you're fishing in California, you've got windows of water temperature where in November and December, your wintertime temperatures are at their max. And then as you get into December and January, they're gonna drop and then they're gonna start coming up, you know, in February and, and March a little bit like that. But when you have that window where that water temperature is within five degrees of its lowest point, this is when these little tiny finesse jerk baits are going to be killer. And it is my favorite time to fish them is during that coldest period. So let's say for example, here in the Ozarks where I fish, most of the time our water temperatures are gonna bottom out if it's cold in the winter at right around 40 degrees. So I'm thinking about using these finesse jerk baits when that water temperature is between 40 to 45, maybe 46 degrees, which is a lot during January and February is where I go to the finesse ones. Now, specifically with that, let me talk about the three here. This is one of my favorites right here, guys. This long has been one of my favorites is this Megabass X80. Um, and again, I'll have the link, the Tackle Warehouse link in the description to, for all these baits here. But guys, the, the biggest jerk bait fish I've ever caught in my life, it was a 914, I caught a Table Rock Lake on the X80. Here's, here's the difference on it as far as the size comparison you can see. With, Here's the 110 plus one, here's the X80. But the reason I really like this X80 is even though it's shorter, it's got, it's got a pretty large profile. It's got a pretty wide side and a little bit wide back. And this thing has an incredible darting action in the water that you don't have to put much action on it. It just, it's probably the most lively jerk bait that Megabass makes. Not that you want a lot of action in the winter time, but it's there if you do need it but I catch a ton of fish on it. If you guys go on an on the water lesson with me, or if any of you guys have been on a on the water lesson with me, you know that I have this tied on all the time in the winter. You've seen me with it. So that's one of my favorites. But the X Nanahan series is pretty new to Megabass and it's sort of, and I really had a chance to fish these a bunch last winter and just smoked them on it everywhere I went. The X Nanahan plus one, next, next X Nanahan plus two, um, these are finessier jerk baits. They all, all of these get down sort of in that, you know, seven to 10 foot range. The X Nanahan plus uh, two here is gonna get down 10 foot or so, four to six pound line. X Nanahan plus one, a little bit smaller lip on it there is gonna get down a little bit less. But again, guys, this is a true, a true finesse jerk bait. For these finesse jerk baits to work good, a little bit different than the larger profile 110 bodies. Clear water is a necessity. You have got to have water visibility of a minimum of three feet. Um, I prefer it sort of in that four to 10 foot zone in visibility, which you have a lot of lakes in the country have that in the winter time, because traditionally winter time, you know, you have a little bit cleaner water. It's like, it seems like that's the clearest water you're gonna have is in the winter time. So you gotta have clear water with that, absolute necessity with that. And then there's a lot of different weather variables. These things, the finesse jerk baits, will definitely outproduce any other profile on the tough fishing days. If you have days out there that have higher light levels, not as much wind, where the fish are generally spooky, these are always going to get you a lot more bites. Here's here's an example of what I'm talking about here, and you guys that have fished with me know this. 
if you would take, say for example, we go out on Table Rock Lake and it's uh, maybe the air temperature is a high of 48 degrees and say the water temperature is 44 degrees, bluebird sky and maybe just a puff of wind. There's not hardly any wind. Fairly high light levels, tough fishing conditions. If you go out with me and throw a Mega Bass Vision 110 plus one, if you catch five fish on this, whoever's throwing the X80 or the X Nanahan in the same boat is gonna catch 15 to 20 fish. That's the difference between the profile. It makes a huge difference. And one of the things that I found out about jerkbait fishing is most people do not understand how complex the technique is in terms of profiles and actions. Because when you're talking about in the winter time, um, the, the mood and the personality of the fish a lot of times they are keyed in on one particular size and so many people out there, they'll have some Mega Bass Vision 110 plus ones in the boat or they'll have some other type of jerk bait, normally a four and a half inch size and they'll have two or three colors on it and they'll just call it good. And if they go out and throw a jerk bait and they don't, they don't bite that size profile or color, they just say, well, they're not biting a jerk bait today. And that's not true. They're always biting a jerk bait in the winter time. Guys, if you, have bass in the lake and you've got water temperatures under 50 degrees and you've got water visibilities over two and a half or three feet, they are biting jerk bait somewhere. You just have to figure out the variables with that. So that's basically the profiles there we're gonna talk about. So we're gonna come back here in a second, guys. I'm gonna get warmed up a little bit, get something to drink, and we're gonna talk a little bit about colors and hooks and some other variables before we actually get into the, the equipment. So I'll be right back. Okay, gang, we're back. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about colors for wintertime jerk baits, and also we're going to have a discussion about line size along with that and then we're going to move into the cadence and retrieve and the uh, type of tackle you fish it on. Now I think a lot of you guys have that have been with the channel if you've if you've watched me very long you've heard me talk a lot about jerk baits in the past a lot about colors but I want to reiterate the importance of color in jerk bait in terms of the conditions that you fish in because uh, when you're talking about yeah, and I always talk about jerkbait fishing being the most complex technique there is, especially wintertime jerkbait fishing, is most of the time you have to hit on the right combination of the right profile of jerkbait, the right color, and the right cadence on there. If you have one of those off, yeah, you, make, you can probably still catch some fish, but you're not going to maximize your day out. And each one of those elements is super critical. If I had to rate the importance of cadence or color or profile, I would put profile number one, I would put color number two, and cadence number three with that. And they're real close. They're not, I'm not like saying one is, there's a lot of daylight between the three because there's not. So I wanna talk about colors in a generic sense. And then also what I'm gonna do guys in the description of the video, I'm going to list some of my favorite jerkbait colors for the winter time so you guys can look at that list and pick through some that you you would like. But I've got about probably about seven or eight different colors that I really use a lot in the winter time. <clears throat> so we'll get into that. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, let's talk about the conditions as far as when certain color patterns work good. First thing I want to talk about is the metallic finishes. Now the metallic finishes <clears throat> just what it says it's got a flashy side on it <clears throat> some of them are a little bit more flashier than others back when i started fishing jerk baits the only thing we had was a chrome sided uh, a, a chrome sided uh, jerk bait or a gold chrome sided jerk bait it's either gold chrome or regular chrome but there's a lot more variations in the chrome finishes now the biggest time or the, the best time to use a chrome finish that i have found out is on a windy day windy day and also a day that's got some type of a little bit higher light level. So when I'm talking about chrome in the winter time, I'm usually talking about uh, a partly cloudy sky to a sunny sky and wind of probably at least 10 miles an hour. You need a significant wind on the water all the time. Now there's something about the combination of the wind on the surface of the water and the brighter uh, you know, light intensity from the sun. I guess it makes it, it, the sun causes it to flash off of that metallic side. And I get a lot of strikes with that. And also there's a water visibility window. The chrome is gonna work better in your water visibilities that are sort of in that three to uh, three to five foot zone. And that, and that, and that range there. It's like, 
if you get clearer than five foot visibility or if you get dirtier than three, doesn't work that good, but that's sort of what I look for is three to five foot visibility, uh, wind and a little bit brighter sunlight conditions. Now the next one would be uh, some type of a translucent finish um, where you can see, you can see my finger behind that. This is actually one of my favorite winter colors I'll put in the description. This is the Mega Bass Matte Shad. I catch a ton of fish on this. <clears throat> the the, the uh, translucent finish is like this where you can see your finger behind it. This is good in tough conditions. If you have bright conditions where, you know, not much, not much uh, cloud cover, sunny, partly cloudy days, very clear water and on days that don't have much wind. That's when these translucent colors will excel. So if you get a condition like that, if you try any other finish besides a translucent finish, if you have high skies, not much wind, clear water, you're probably not gonna catch many fish, but if you put a translucent on, um, it's really gonna make a huge difference under those conditions. Now, another time translucent side works good is if you have very clear water. Say, say the water visibility you're fishing is like over eight foot clarity, which we do have, a lot of lakes have that. I mean, if you fish like Lake Lanier in Georgia, you fish any of the Ozarks lakes, some of the California lakes, some of the East Tennessee lakes, very, very common to have eight foot of visibility. So if you've got really clear water, the translucent works good in any sky condition. I don't care if it's raining or cloudy or windy or not windy, super clear water, you always wanna use a translucent finish. You'll get a lot more bites with it. And then finally, you've got your, the flat finish, the matte finish, which is just what it says. It, it's, it doesn't, it's not flashy, it's not translucent. It's just like a painted colored side. They call it a flat or a, or a flat finish. I mean, it just doesn't, re, doesn't reflect much light, can't see through it. Now, this is a really good color in low light conditions and dirtier water. So if I'm fishing water visibilities sort of on that lower range of the winter water visibilities down to around that three foot zone, two and a half to three feet, um, especially if I've got clouds, like if it's a misty rainy day or even a day that snows because it does snow in the winter time, um, the flatter finishes like this will definitely produce, uh, you know, more bites. And I think probably one of the reasons if you see a flat finish in the water like this, it, um, it has sort of a glow to it based upon the type of flat finish. So that glow a lot of times maybe attracts the fish from a little bit distance. But one of the things you got to understand guys about jerk baits is, and we'll get into this here in a little bit when we do the, the cadence and retrieve for the winter time is in the winter time, you know, the fish are, they're more lethargic. It's not like they don't move around. They'll move around actually faster than what you think they will but overall their metabolism is a little bit slower than the rest of the year. So you're fishing the jerk bait a little bit slower in the winter time, obviously. And doing so, since you're not moving that jerk bait, you're just, you're barely moving along like that. These bass will get next to this jerk bait and they'll study it. They'll look, I've seen them before. They'll get inches away from this. Sometimes they'll even hit it and bump it with their mouth shut. So they're looking at this thing close. Now, this is why the color and the cadence is so important because you can trigger that fish to bite based upon how you work the lure as far as the retriever, the cadence. Also, you can trigger them with the color, you know, with that. And the color variation, again, has a lot to do with the water clarity, the sky visibility, the wind, that type of deal. So hitting upon that right color when those fish are studying the bait makes a big difference. And also, another thing you gotta realize what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about a non-live scope jerkbait technique. I have no doubt in my mind that I could, I could probably triple my jerkbait bites if I use live scope. You guys know my stance on that. I don't agree with it. So I'm talking about, you know, basically fishing standard bass fishing techniques with a jerkbait. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're fishing live scope or not, you still have to have, you still have to have the right combination of the cadence and the retrieve and the color to generate that strike with it. So that's my, my basic variations with the colors. Now let's talk about line size. Line is super, super critical guys. Now we'll talk about the, the equipment here in a second because the only, the only thing I use in the winter time is spinning tackle. And I wanna convince you to do the same by the end of this video. So therefore, 
I use lighter line than most people in the wintertime. Most people that fish jerk baits use 10 pound test line even in the wintertime, which is a huge mistake. I mean, you're, you're cutting your bites down so much by using 10 pound line. If you go out with me on Tabor Lock Lake and you throw a bait caster with 10 pound line on a jerk bait, now I've got four or six pound test on a spinning rod or vice versa, the guy with a spinning rod is going to wax your butt guaranteed 100% of the time over that bait caster with 10 pound line. So there's three line tests that I use with my jerk baits and I use the Seaguar and Vizx all the time. I think this is the best line in there. I'll also put that bait, that tackle warehouse link in the description for this. I use it in three different pound tests. Do not discount the importance about what I'm fixing to tell you here. <clears throat> use straight fluorocarbon line. Do not try to do a braid to fluorocarbon setup. Never ever use braid to fluorocarbon, all, in my opinion, on anything, but never use it on a jerk bait. It's, it's the worst thing you can do because you need that stretch that does not come with having the braided line. You have to have that stretch in order to, to manipulate the bait correctly. So you straight fluorocarbon line, four to, four to four, six and eight pound test line. Now, what determines that is the water clarity, how deep I want to get the bait down and the cover. If the water is really clear and really cold and really open, say for example, if I'm fishing a clean clay or gravelly or rock point that doesn't have any timber or brush on it and the water visibility is, you know, 10 foot clarity, I'm going to four pound test, guys. Four pound test line will maximize the depth of your jerk bait. You can cast it 25% further than six or eight pound test line and it's gonna get your bait down. It, it, Four pound line will get your bait down another three feet deeper than eight pound test line at least. And this is critical when you're fishing that. So if you're fishing one of those super clear lakes, especially the ones that have a mixed species, a large mouth spotted bass and a, a, a small mouth bass, try the four pound test line. You can land huge fish on four pound line, guys. Do not get intimidated by that. Another thing with that in correlation I'm gonna talk about here is on your jerk bait hooks, you have to remember, and, and we'll get into the line, I just, this is a little side note, but on the hooks on a jerk bait, it is so critical to go small. Don't, this is the stock mega bass uh, uh, out barb hooks that come on it. They're a really good hook that comes, but if, but see how small they are, they're not a big hook. They're probably like a number, I guess, number six, maybe number five in some brands. When, if you have to put replacement hooks on a jerk bait, don't use anything over a number five or number six. I prefer number six. Smaller diameter, it gives your bait better action. It reduces less visual uh, deterrent to the fish. The smaller the hooks, the more bites you're gonna get because it's less of a visual deterrent. And the diameter of those smaller hooks will penetrate better, which is necessary when you're using that four pound test line. When you're using four pound line, you don't have any power to drive hooks in. So you have to, the fish have to hook themselves with a small diameter, small hook. So go with small hooks on there, small diameters. And um, the four pound line is what I use in that situation. Now, my main line that I use for most all winter time, and, and I, I will say one thing about the four guys, the only time I do use four is on the finesse jerk baits, like the, you know, the Nana hands and the X80s. I don't use them on the bigger 110s, but if I'm fishing, the bigger size, like the 110 Junior, which is a little bit bigger, or the 110 like that, that's when I go up to a six and eight pound test line. Now, the six pound test line, it's the same deal. It's all about a combination of water clarity, the depth that I need to get the bait at, um, and you know the type of structure of the fish on. It's the same thing. If the water's really, really clear, go down to six to get a little bit more depth out of it. You're not gonna get hung up a lot. I use six pound tests most of the time at Table Rock Lake. And there's even a lot of standing timber and I don't have any problem with it. I mean, last year and all the jerk bait fishing I did, I never broke off one time on six pound test line. And the only time that I go to eight pound test is if I'm using the larger one, like the regular 110 plus one, and that water visibility <clears throat> is a little bit more off colored. Say if, I, say if I've got that water visibility of two and a half to three and a half feet, then I'll go to eight pound line simply because I don't need to attain the depth out of it. And uh, it's not necessarily about the cover as much because I usually don't fish the jerk bait around any type of heavy cover. It's more about the depth attainment on there. So since I don't have to get the depth out of it, I can get away with eight pound test line on my spinning rod with that. 
So that's a good coverage there of the colors and the line test. I'm gonna get a quick drink, guys, and we're gonna come back with the rod and reel setup and the cadence and retrieve part of the video. So we'll be right back. Okay, guys, now let's get back to what I consider probably the most critical phase of our seminar, and that is um, rod and reel that you throw it on and how you retrieve the jerk bait, the, the, the uh, technique of the cadence and retrieve in the winter time, because it's completely different than any other time of year, how you work a jerk bait. I think that probably one of the biggest mistakes that anglers make and one of the reasons they struggle to catch fish on jerk baits in the winter time is they don't understand how to put action on a jerk bait. So we're gonna get into that into the video. And um, one of the things about that, when you're when you're talking about generating action on a jerk bait, this is this is really the the core reason that I say jerk bait fishing is more complicated in the winter time than any other technique out there. Because the jerk bait on its own, it doesn't have much action. If you reel it through the water, it just sort of goes like that. It doesn't have much action at all. The angler has to impart the action on this. And when you're dealing with triggering reaction strikes from a from a fish that is studying a lure close, generating that right cadence and retrieve is everything to getting that fish to actually strike the lure. I mean, it makes a huge difference with that. So we're gonna get into that. And I think another thing about this is um, you've got to have the right setup with it. Now, if you can take one thing away from this seminar, guys, is when you go jerkbait fishing in the wintertime, <clears throat> take every bait cast outfit out of your boat. Don't even take them with it. All you need is a spinning rod. A spinning rod is the best uh, tool to fish a wintertime jerkbait on. There's not even anything close with it. You can't, don't even, don't even consider use a bait casting rod. So I'll talk a little bit about the outfit then we're gonna get into the cadence. First of all, the, the length and the action of the rod is really critical in order to get that act, get the correct action out of it. If you don't have the right, right length of the rod and the right tip action, you're simply, your jerk bait is going to be too aggressive or it's gonna to be too dead. So you have to have the right one. And guys, this is the rod I prefer by any of them. It's the Mega Bass Whip Snake model. Comes in a couple different models. This is the, the Mega Bass Levante. It also comes in the Hiroshi. And I'll put the Mega ba the uh, Tackle Warehouse link in the description if you guys would want to get one there. The reason this rod's so good, it's six foot 11 inches long, which is about perfect because it's not too short, it's not too long as far as interfering with the action you put on it. You can still get a good long cast on it. You can manipulate the bait and the fish well. But more importantly, it's got the perfect tip on it. It's got a, it's got sort of a medium soft tip on it. And this tip is everything, guys. When it comes to jerkbait fishing, the, the, the action of the taper of your rod tip is everything in order to make that bait do what you want to. It's got a fairly stiff butt section on it, but more importantly, it's got just the perfect bend on the tip. You cannot discount that. If you have a rod that is too stiff, you're gonna overwork your jerkbait, and if you have a rod tip that is too stop soft, it's going to deaden your jerk bait. So getting that right tip that comes with this Mega Bass Whip Snake is really critical. And then the reel with it, the main thing, guys, I don't, it doesn't matter what brand or reel that you use, make sure that you have a larger diameter 3000 series spool. Um, spinning reels, I, it seems like a lot of guys use the 2500 spool, which is a little bit smaller. But if you go to the 3000 spool, it will increase your casting distance, which is also critical with that. Okay, now let's get into the how to retrieve the jerk bait. Now there's several um, tricks with this, or several different ways based upon the water temperature. Now I want to give you two different ways to work a jerk bait, and 90% of the time it's one of these two ways it's going to work based upon your water temperature and maybe your water clarity a little bit. If your water temperatures <clears throat> are like say over 48 degrees, sort of 45 to 55, which is sort of like the max for winter you know, you can put a little bit more action on the bait, but if that water visibility or the water temperatures are under 48, closer to the low 40s, it requires a different approach. So the main thing you want to do with this, guys, is number one, make a long cast. In jerkbait fishing, the depth that your lure attains is, is directly in correlation with how long your cast is. And that's another reason why you use light line. So whenever you cast out there, if you're fishing points or whatever, Try to make the longest cast that you can because the bait is going to go deeper and it's going to stay deeper 
longer. Now, what I'm going to say here is, let me, before I get into the retrieve, let me, let me show you what I mean by it's going to stay deeper. In the winter time, 98% of the quality fish that you're going to catch is going to come when that jerk bait comes down like this and it reaches its maximum depth. So let's say you cast it out and it comes down like this and it reaches its maximum depth. The longer the cast you make, the quicker it's going to get to the maximum depth and the longer it's gonna stay in its maximum depth before it starts coming up again. So on a traditional cast, if you make a long cast, say like a, you know, I don't know, a 50, 70 yard cast, which is a super long cast, that bait's gonna come down like this and you're out of the strike zone, you're out of the strike zone, you're starting to get into the strike zone, but you're still out of it. And once you bottom out to the max depth that that specific jerk bait is running, you've hit what is called the wintertime sweet spot. This is where you're gonna catch your good fish when it's at the maximum depth. Now, the distance that you're in this maximum depth, again, depends upon your casting length because if you made a short cast, your bait's gonna come down, you're gonna be in the, in the sweet spot just a fraction of a second and it's gonna come up. But a long cast, you're gonna stay in that sweet spot a long time, long time, high percentage, high percentage, high percentage, high percentage, it's gonna get lower, 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 lower as it goes up. So keep it down as deep as it can by that long cast. So okay, we've made our cast out there. The first thing you wanna do is get your bait down. Now, there's two different things here. If you're using a larger jerk bait, like the 110 plus one, you can be a little bit more aggressive jerking it down. But if you try to jerk a finesse jerk bait down, like the X80 or the Nanahan, if you try to jerk it down, you know, hard like that, you're gonna blow it out. You can't do that. So when you're jerking your bait down to get it down, what you're wanting to do is you're you wanting to get it to the maximum depth as quick as you can. So cast it out there keep your rod tip low and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just gentle jerks while you're reeling and, it, and not hard jerks, gentle jerks right down to the water, not to the side, jerk that rod tip right down to the water about 10 times while you're reeling slow. After you've jerked it down about 10 times, <clears throat> you're gonna be sort of at that max depth a little bit. Now, once you get to that max depth, if that water temperature is close to 50 degrees, you know, I'll do just sort of like the traditional, like jerk, jerk, pause, and let it set. Jerk, jerk, pause, let it set. But a lot of times they won't bite it like this. If that, wa if that water temperature is a little bit colder and the fish are a little bit finicky, this is what you have to do. And this is the most important part of this video. If you can, again, another thing if you can remember here, a secret is when you cast it out there and you're jerking it down, let's say right now we're in that sweet spot. When you're in that sweet spot, just twitch your rod tip like that without reeling the handle. Twitch it almost, almost like you're working a shaky head. Just go just like that. And this, what's gonna happen is your bait is sitting down there and it's, it's sort of gonna just vibrate just like that. It's not gonna really move anywhere. And then after you twitch it just in one spot like that a couple times, reel it slow without even moving it, and then pop it once. Just a, a short pop. So you're casting it out there, you're shaking it like that, reeling it slow without moving the rod tip, and then just pop it like that a couple times. Guys, that's when they will hit it. And you need to repeat that. Repeat that as long as it's in the, in the strike zone. Cast it out there, you know, work it down, shake it like that without reeling it, to like that, pop it a couple times, and then do the same thing. Shake it, reel it a couple times, reel it a couple inches, pop it again, all the, all the time that it's in the strike zone. So it's gonna look sort of like this. You're gonna, it's gonna come down like this. You're gonna twitch it on a, on a slack line. It's sort of gonna vibrate. And then you're, it's, it's just gonna reel like that. It's gonna barely move for maybe three or four inches. And then it's gonna dart like that, like just a subtle dart. And a lot of times what happens is that those fish will come down, they'll study it, it's jerking like this, it's moving almost like a slow water cold minnow, and you jerk it fast and those fish think it's gonna get away from them, and that's when they'll come up and, and get it like that. That's so critical with that. Now, if the water temperature is super cold, 
in the winter. Say for example, your water temperatures are 40 degrees or even lower. Stockton Lake, I, we, we fish a lot when the water temperature is 37 degrees and there's ice on part of the lake. If it's really cold like that, when you jerk it down there and you get it down to its max depth, don't do anything. Just barely turn the handle, just like that, and stop it. Barely turn the handle and stop it. Sometimes when that water temperature is so cold, those fish don't even want it to move. It's just moving forward just about like that, and they'll bite it, you know, just barely reeling it with that. So um, another thing with that is let's talk a little bit about um, sinking or suspending or floating or something like that. In the wintertime, guys, I don't want my bait floating at all. I don't want it suspending at all. I want it sinking all the time. And when I'm talking about sinking, I don't mean sinking like that. I mean, when that jerk bait gets down there, I want that, that bait where it's barely sl slow and just like that, it's just barely sinking. Maybe, the, maybe it'll sink a foot in 10 seconds, just a real slow sink like that. Now there's a couple different w reasons for this. Number one is I can get the bait deeper if I need to by letting it sink. And number two is I catch more fish when that bait is sinking and that fish thinks that loot, that bait, that maybe that minnow's dying and sinking than I do if it's floating up like that. So you need to adjust your jerk bait either with upgrading your hooks a little bit or putting some type of a suspend strip on it to get that bait where it slow sinks like that. Now, a lot of mega bass lures Say for example, the X80, right out of the box, it sinks perfectly. It'll, it'll sink super slow like that. And uh, you know, just perfect. And another thing about the sink is, is since you're moving the bait, since you're twitching it and you're reeling it slow, it's not gonna sink as fast as what you think it is. But nevertheless, that slow sink is a real critical element. I've, I catch a lot of fish throwing it out there, getting it down to its deepest point and just letting it sink. And all of a sudden that line will just twitch like that. Okay, so that's, we've got the line covered. We've got the cadence, the rod. We're gonna take a little break guys and we're gonna come back with our final segment about where you wanna fish jerk baits at as far as the type of structure and the areas of the lake. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, in the final segment here, we're gonna be talking about where you wanna fish a jerk bait at, the best areas to look for to catch wintertime jerk bait fish. And all this together, guys, it's like, it's every single part of this is important. I talk about certain things like you need to pay attention to this or if you can take one thing away from it. But wintertime jerkbait fishing, it's a system. It's a system that has taken me, you know, 50 years to develop. And I, you know, I still learn every day. It's not like I, you never stop learning. But out of all the cumulative years I have jerkbait fishing, um, you guys are getting the juice. You guys are getting what I have learned that's taken me decades and decades of freezing my butt off fishing a jerkbait to learn. So let's get into a little bit here. Now, first of all, I'm gonna preface this. Let's talk a little bit about the whole live scope deal. And you guys are well aware if you watch my videos that I am, an, I am the anti live scoper. I don't agree with it. I mean, I'm not saying you're bad if you do it. I don't use it. So the way that I fish a jerkbait is not gonna be applicable as far as the areas go. The, tech, the way that I talked about the techniques and the colors, if you're a live scoper, you can use all that. But if you're, but as far as the areas that you're fine, I'm talking about the traditional areas you can catch fish on without live scope. And, I, and, I, and I'll tell you one thing about that, guys, is I, I am confident in the dead of the winter time that I can beat or compete with any live scoper not using live scope in the wintertime jerkbait fishing because there's a there's two different populations of fish in the wintertime that you can catch on the jerkbait. There are fish that are truly suspended that you can target and then there's fish that you can pull off the bottom. And that's what I wanna talk about a little bit here. I don't think a lot of people realize that there are two distinct groups of fish that live in the wintertime that you can actually target jerkbait fishing. The true suspended fish that we're talking about, you can catch them, that we'll get into in a second, but the, the live scope suspended fish are not structure oriented fish. Those are open water fish that are chasing shad school. So there, it's like, you know, it'd be like finding a needle in a stack of needles if you didn't have live scope, but don't worry about it because you can still catch as many or more fish than those live scopers can with how I'm gonna tell you guys here. <clears throat> so first of all, Let's start with that basic premise that every lake, you've got two populations of jerkbait fish that you can catch in the wintertime. 
You got the shallower jerkbait fish that you're pulling off the bottom that are living on the bottom. And then you have the true suspended wintertime fish. And there's two different populations of fish out there like that. Now, the main thing that the number one structure for wintertime jerkbait fishing by far, we're gonna start out with it, our main lake and secondary points. This is where, this is probably one of the biggest home for most bass in the wintertime. <clears throat> there's other places too we'll get into, but there's always, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> there's always a large population of fish in the wintertime to be caught on these main lake points or the secondary points within the creeks. But you have to realize that on every point, there are two populations of fish that live on each point. You have the, and I don't care what the water clarity is, if, if the water's, if the water clarity is three feet or if it's 20 feet, it's the same thing. You've got some fish, <clears throat> they're living up in that five to 10 foot zone, maybe five to 15 foot zone, even in cold water, especially if the water's got a little more color to it. If you got the water visibility closer to three feet, you're gonna have a larger population of fish on the bottom on those points in five to say 10, maybe 12 feet um, than you will in the clear water. But regardless, there's a population of fish that are living on those rocks. They got their bellies on the mud or their bellies on the sand or their bellies on the rock, whatever it is. And when you throw that jerk bait out there and you jerk that bait down, you know, four, five, six feet deep and the water's eight or 10 foot deep, you're pulling those fish off the bottom to hit it almost like a crankbait would. Now, those fish out there are my favorite ones to target because there's more of those type of fish out there than what people realize. <clears throat> so one of the favorite things that I do is on anywhere I go, I don't care if it's Lake in Georgia or East Tennessee or Ozarks, I'll get out on those main lake and secondary points. I'll put my boat in 10 to 15 feet of water and I'll cast to the bank and I'll work around the point, the you know, the end of the point and the sides of the point, maybe down a hundred feet or so and try to target that five to 10 foot of zone. I'm trying to pull those fish up off the bottom. Now this is especially effective if you have lower light conditions and some wind. If you got a cloudy day that has a, you know, a 10, 15 mile an hour wind, there's gonna be more of those type of fish up there. Even if the water's cold, guys, I don't care if the, wa if the water can be 40 degrees and you can still catch them like that. I, I catch a ton of fish in Missouri when that water is 40, 42 degrees in five to seven foot of water. Don't think that all these fish are out deep in the winter because they're not. So I'll start out like that. And then if I don't catch any, or even if I do catch any, the next pass I'm gonna make is going to be on the same point, but I'm gonna move farther out. I'm gonna get out there say in 30 foot of water and I'm gonna cast towards the point. Obviously I can't hit the point based upon the angle or the slope of the point, but I'm trying to target that 10 to 20 foot of zone and I'm trying to pull these fish up that are suspended. Or maybe if it's clear, even off the bottom in 20 foot of water, because if you've got a deep diving jerk bait like that 110 plus one, and you put it on eight pound test line or the 110 plus two, you're gonna get that bait down over 10 feet and it will pull a fish off the bottom in 20 foot of water. But if I fan cast all, over, all around those points, I, my boat may be in 25 or 30 foot of water, and I, might, I may cast to the point, I may turn around and cast out in open water. I'm fan casting everywhere around the boat, targeting the same type of fish the live scopers are, I just can't see them. But I'm pulling those fish up off the bottom and the ones that are truly suspended because there's going to be a few fish out there that are chasing those shad schools and they're gonna be roaming out there in 10 to 20 foot of water following shad around and those are the ones you can catch with that. <clears throat> so that's the first type of area I look for. Second type of area that I like is on channel banks or bluffs. Now, every lake has got channel banks. Every lake has, you know, banks that have the creek channel swings against the bank where you have a, a sharper drop off and some deeper water. These are key areas in the winter time too. Now, bl I prefer bluffs if you have bluffy doesn't have to be a vertical bluff, but some type of a steep wall like that. These can be excellent areas. And I parallel these things depending upon the water clarity. If the water visibility is sort of like three to five foot, I'm paralleling closer to the bank, maybe from, you know, 10 feet out, or excuse me, 10 feet in towards. And if the water is really clear, like over five foot of visibility, I still parallel 
but I keep my boat out deeper where I'm targeting that 15 to 20 foot of water. Now, a lot of lakes out there also are gonna have submergent timber off of bluffs because bluffs are the type of areas that have a lot of timber on them. And if you have a lake that has submergent timber, like say for Ozark Lakes here, maybe Lake, like Lake Lanier in Georgia, you know, some of the California lakes, you can target that suspended tent or that uh, the uh, deeper uh, submergent timber with a jerk bait on those bluffs too and catch them like that. So the bluffs are number, the be, be the number two. The two other type of structures would be ditches and if you have grass in the lake you have. Now ditches are a prime area to catch them on jerk baits. Now all the lakes out there, if you have a herring lake, like Lake Hartwell, Lake Lanier, Lake Murray, those type of lakes that have blueback herring on it, herring lakes love, or the bass and herring lakes love to get in those ditches in the coves. So go on the lower end of the lake and get back in all the major coves back there and just fan cast in the middle of those coves once you start getting into that, you know, say 15 to 25 foot zone. Fan cast everywhere in the middle and those fish will live in those ditches and you can pull them up off the bottom in those ditches and they'll also, they'll be suspended in those ditches. So that's a primary to catch them, primary to catch them on, prime area to catch them on in the winter time, especially if the lake you fish has a big spotted bass population. And then finally, your grass lakes. Um, all you guys that have grass, I don't care if it's Florida, Texas, TVA lakes like that, fishing a jerk bait over the top of deeper grass is a great way to catch them in the winter time. Um, obviously, you're gonna need your, try to find the deepest grass that you can, uh, whether it be along a river channel or out off a deeper point, but same type of deal. You're just fan casting out over those deeper grass beds, you know, trying to pull those fish up of the, out of that deeper grass. But those are the main type of areas that I look for. Um, there's very few situations where you're not gonna catch them in that type of water. And there's very few situations where you have to do anything else. I would say if you, if you, don't, if, if you don't have any clue or don't wanna do anything else in jerkbait fishing and you just wanna catch some fish, just go out there in the winter time and get you that Mega Bass X80 or one of those Nana hands, put it on four pound test, line and do nothing but fish points with it. Fish secondary points, fish main lake points. And I can assure you, you're gonna catch some fish doing that, especially if you got clear water and if you got any type of a decent bass population. It doesn't make any difference on the angle of the point. I mean, it, it can be a, like a flatter clay point like they have, you know, back east, or it can be the steeper points like we have, you know, here in the Ozarks. Bass just love to live on points with that. So. Anyway, guys, that sort of give you a foundation on how to catch them in the wintertime. Um, anybody out there interested in uh, going on an on-the-water jerkbait lesson with me, just shoot me a private message. i got a thing flying here everywhere. Just shoot me a private message on my Facebook page, Randy Blockett Professional Angler, if you're interested in that. And also, please, um, if you don't mind, if you guys want to get some of these products I talk about, if you use that Tackle Warehouse link I put in the description, um, that's a really good way to help the channel out. So, Hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it helps you catch some and we'll see you guys next week.